with the coach of the University of Tennessee, Johnny Majors, and the voice of the Vols, John Ward. On a balmier day than normal, and on a windy day as well, two teams headed south for postseason games met. Quite a struggle. Tennessee comes out on top by a score of 10 to nothing. Important victory for the Volunteers, Coach Johnny It certainly Major. was, John, in a typical Kentucky game in the best fashion possible, certainly since we won, naturally. But as a ball game that uh, a team had to be patient like we did against a much improved Kentucky team, there were some very important of the elements of the kicking game. Kentucky quick kicking, a uh, uh, very good job on their part. Better punting on our part, uh, with the exception of one slice kick. Reve is kicking off with the wind behind his back in the end zone and a key field goal. And most important of all, we shut the opponents out. The defense gave us better field position. And when you shut your opponents out and your offense has no turnovers, you certainly enhance your chances to win. <laughs> and when Tennessee did by a score of 10 to nothing, we'll be seeing the first half. And then, of course, the scoring all takes place in the second half, coming up in just one minute. Commonwealth well, Stadium, Lexington, Kentucky, the site on a windy day as the toss of the coin is won by Kentucky. The Cats defer. Tennessee will receive. We're set to go now with the first half of the football game. 58,000 plus on hand. And here to tell you about it, the coach of the Volunteers, Johnny Majors. Uh, the win was certainly a very deciding factor of Saturday. Kentucky uh, has the win behind their back, a strong one. Uh, we get the ball back to the, about the 24-yard line. Randall Morris, who's number two in the nation individually, and our team, number one, nationally in kickoff returns, which says a lot for our offensive team and the staff who's worked so well with them. Tennessee with Alan Cockrell at quarterback, handing it off this time, and the drive straight ahead sees Henderson pick up about five yards. Not much there. Uh, Kentucky is a much improved football team. Uh, the second year under Jerry Claiborne is shown by their one loss record of six and four, a uh, six, four and one. And they're very stingy defensively. Uh, they make you go the hard, long way using the wide tackle six uh, made famous by Tennessee and some other people many years ago. Good hard tackle and good pursuit by Kentucky. Several blue shirts around the ball. That's Johnny Jones carrying the ball. Knocked down after a pickup of four, and it's first down and ten, as the referee indicates. First and ten at the Volunteer 39. Uh, Cockle factor pass. Beautiful pass. Wide open to, uh, to Pipe Duncan. A good move by Duncan on the inside move and setting up the outside uh, open area. Let's take a second look right there, Coach Johnny Majors. Good protection. Kentucky gave us some problems later on in the second quarter, particularly in rushing the passer. A uh, beautifully executed play, thrown into the wind. I might mention, making two key first downs early like that is so important, particularly in the first quarter, into the wind. So Tennessee now has Henderson banging straight ahead for three yards, second down and seven. And it looks like we have a chance to take the ball on down, possibly, and put some uh, points on the scoreboard early in the game, which also is very important to score first. At this time, it's Grimsley, the linebacker, who halts Johnny Jones after a one-yard gain. It's third and six at the Cat 38. Nothing to nothing, first quarter. Cockrell, back to throw. Here's the blitz, here's the pass, and it is overthrown and incomplete. And frankly, a good job of Cockrell getting rid of the ball and evading the loss, uh, because they did blitz us and cut us unsuspected uh, a few times. We adjusted at halftime and did a much more effective job of throwing the ball and taking the short passing game that helped us move the ball down to score. Excellent punt and outstanding coverage. So it's Colquitt punting into the wind. Squibs a high one that is down by Tennessee, and so the Wildcats will have it first down and 10 at the Kentucky four-yard line. Nothing to nothing, first quarter. And Jimmy Colquitt taking a page out of uh, the book of uh, John Warren who did such an outstanding job of pooch kicking last year for us. Uh, but an excellent kick by him, excellent coverage. And now, good pursuit, good play defensively. Alvin Toes almost makes a tackle close to the goal line, close to being a safety. Uh, a little bit sure tackle, Al Alvin, but I like the, the way that he made only one yard. So it's going to be second down, 10 yards to go as the give again. And here meeting him, Studaway from Memphis. This looks like Studaway might have had his best game thus far. I haven't seen all the films yet, of course. Stood away, and I believe possibly Ricky Holt was the second man on the tackle. That's who it was, and so on uh -oh. third down. There it is, the quick kick. 
Uh, I've seen only two quick kicks maybe in a half a dozen years or more. In fact, I believe, John, those are the only two quick kicks this year I've ever been involved with maybe in college football. We had one against Alabama as a head coach, and this one with Kentucky, which was like 72 yards. So we move along to the second quarter as field position turns around. This is Johnny Jones in a nothing-nothing ball game, and look at this cut. That's, that's excellent running. Johnny Jones as a strong runner. Another thing I like about him, he holds on the ball very well. He runs with a good body angle. He's a slasher. Plus, he has the ability to break a broken field run when he gets a chance. Good cutting there. He stiff-armed the first man. Good angle. Uh, that was a play that, frankly, was busted, and he and B.B. Cooper uh, made the most out of it, and I'll give Alan Cockrell credit for really doing a good job. It's a first and ten for Tennessee, but the Volunteers are unable to move further, so Kentucky has the ball first down at ten to go at its 17-yard line. Uh-oh, short passing game. Complete. Tackle, uh, well, stopped momentarily by toes, but not really tackled, but looks like Joe Kofer and Carl Sander make the tackle. But it's going to be a first down for the Wildcats. Their first of the football game, and here's the second on the pass from Jenkins to Phillips. Just short of a first. It's second down and two. The score still nothing and nothing in the second quarter. Carl's, I mean, uh, Alvin Toast played with a bruised hand, a very badly bruised hand. He had to have it wrapped up rather heavily, uh, heavily, and that sometimes takes away from some of your effectiveness tackling. Cochran carries, picks up three. It's first down ten for the Wildcats. This is Lee, who's in a tailback, and he slithers forward for a pickup of three, making it second and seven at the Cat 40. I'll have to give some credit to Reggie McKenzie there for really stuffing the play, even though nobody made the tackle. It forced the back out of his main lane of running. Almost scores on the play, saved by uh, Vince Clark. That's who it was. Vince Clark, 29, made the tackle. A gain on that play of, for the Cats of 27 yards, and it's first and 10 at the 33, nothing and nothing. The Cats are threatening. A bootleg pass well contained by Dale Jones, but fine job by Jenkins, tackled by uh, Terry Brown, a it's fine a, freshman redshirt. It's again the pass thrown to the back, Cochran, and it's got to be second down six. Nothing and nothing, Kentucky moving. Kentucky showed much more variety in their offense this year, more varied offensive sets, a lot of shifting, an outstanding catch and throw brought down by uh, Alvin Toes and Tommy Sims. The pass complete to Oliver White, 15 yards. It's first and 10, Kentucky at the 14. And uh, there's a, a well-played uh, sweep by Joe Cover from Knoxville Rural High School and Alvin Coles from Forsyth, Georgia. It's a loss of two. It's got to be second down 12. Nothing to nothing. Kentucky deep in Tennessee territory, and this is Jenkins to pass. Good pressure by White and Studaway. Looks again like Mark Studaway was more evident in this game and any time possibly offseason, I see him really working hard watching. Look at him. Both of those tackles, putting pressure on him. And Bill Shaw, our fine defensive line coach, told me this week's his coach. I believe Mark Stoneway may have a chance to play his best game because he has really been pushed in practice, and he has pushed himself better than ever before. So here is Kentucky, third down, still threatening. Fumble, scramble. They get it back, but still stood away as they ran the ball. And Tennessee recovers the fumble, stopping the drive, and the Volunteers go on at the end of the first half. It's still scoreless, and we'll be seeing the second half of this game at Lexington, Tennessee, and Kentucky coming up in just one minute. The score is Tennessee nothing, Kentucky nothing, as we're set now to move into the third period of the game at Lexington, Kentucky. And as we pick up the action right here, it's going to be Kentucky taking the kickoff, and the Wildcats will have the ball. And here again, Coach Johnny Major. Oh, fumble. And a big play. We caused that, John. This is the first big play of the ball game that really gave us field position offensively, and that's what defenses have to do for it. We have a very good defense this year. Without question, much improved. But an outstanding defense will also turn the ball over at key areas for the offense to be in four-down territory by return kicks and intercepted passes. And that is the first big play for field position, even though the defense did cause a fumble right before the half to keep Kentucky from scoring. Fine running. Good blocking, number one. But Johnny Jones was wasting no time heading north and south. <laughs> it's first and ten. The ball recovered at the 36. It's now at the 24. First and ten for the Volunteers. This is Jones. B.B. Cooper makes a block in the middle of the line there. We're running uh, behind the middle of uh, Glenn Struno and uh, uh, 
Bill Mayo and the right tackle, uh, Steve Knight. Tennessee to the line, nothing you nothing to score, Johnny Jones. There's a trap play, uh, the Mike Furnish pulling, and also a block it behind the right side of our line again, but the same three people I mentioned a few minutes ago. So it's gonna be third down and two, Tennessee to the line, running backs are split. Quarterback Carkle. This is oh, Henderson. Yes. First down for the Volunteers. Yeah, we'll give uh, we'll give some plaudits to the left side of the line, like uh, left guard uh, Mike Furness and left tackle Kurt Sander, and I believe maybe tied in John Matthews. Yes, and fine running by Henderson, and I believe BB Cooper was the lead back blocking for Henderson. There was definite daylight, but Sam was running hard. But Kentucky stops Tennessee, so on fourth down, the Volunteers will go for a field goal. Nothing to nothing. Fuad Reveille. I uh, really hate to settle for a field goal in fourth and two in a situation like this. Looks like Fred was, it was hit on the field goal attempt. But nonetheless, uh, I hate to settle for a field goal, but after the ball game's gone for over three, two quarters, you need to get points on the scoreboard some way, and fourth and two is not always the easiest yardage to make. Tennessee three to nothing as the Volunteers have Reveille's kickoff in and through the end zone, and so it's Kentucky, this time a loss of two. Reggie White made the fine play, the last play before this, and a good break to the ball by Joe Kofer. The receiver was extremely well covered by Kofer. So it's going to be third down and 12. Kentucky deep in its own territory, just having fallen behind three to nothing. And here back to throw is Jenkins, and here comes the pressure. Stood away, uh, knocked him out of the pocket. And Dale Jones almost throws him for safety, doesn't he? Very, very close. We'll take a second look at this. Right now, and forward momentum is marked at the one-yard line. Here's Jenkins. I want to see this again. Uh, I don't believe that. I don't believe that, for goodness sakes. I, uh, and they may mark it on the one-yard line also. It might have been on the one-inch line. So here is Calhoun in to punt from deep in his own end zone. Low snap, he gets it away. And a low kick, John, and this gives us the field position that we so badly need. Again, when you have no turnovers offensively and they don't score on you, by gosh, uh, uh, you just don't lose many ball games. Tennessee and Kentucky. Alan Cockrell at quarterback. Here's the pass. It's oh, yes. Good play. Block for him. John Cooks hustling downfield. Randall Morris, a fine receiver out of the backfield. And a good touch by Cockrell, who again did a fine job handling our offensive game plan on a play by play, series by series situation, but not getting us in trouble. There's a second look at Randall Morris on the pass to the back coming out underneath, and there's the run by Morris to give Tennessee a first down. Morris the other way. It's complete. Big plays. Big plays. Again, Cockrell with a good touch, getting the ball up in his eyes where he can see it, and Randall with fine concentration. Let's take a second look at this gainer. Good protection. We did have to neutralize the blitz the second half. Kentucky threw us out of a kilter a few times after we made some very good yards. It looked like we were going to break some runs for our big gamers. It's first and goal, and this is H Henderson banging through the left side of the line, moves it down to the one-yard line. The score is 3 nothing in favor of Tennessee. The Volunteers threatening yet another time to the line they come. Behind the left side of our line uh, in the power back, B.B. Cooper, all 5'9", 195 pounds, 5'7", 195. <laughs> And here goes B.B. Look at B.B. Did you see that? Leading it through. through. That number 30 right in there. And some of those people who aren't mentioned very often sometimes, like John Matthews, Kurt, uh, Kurt Singer, and there's Mike Furnish, number 63, scrambling, and Glenn Struno, the left side of our line in our fine center, Struno. So the extra point is up and good, and at the end of three, Tennessee leads Kentucky by a score of 10-0. Moving now to the fourth period, the Cats running, and this will be Adams. Adams is a good slicer himself, a big, strong tailback, about 6'2", 210-pounder, and uh, he almost broke that one. Down to the Tennessee oh, 28. Oh, oh that makes a valuable yard there. That's Logan up the middle for 16 yards, and suddenly Kentucky back in the middle of the game. They've got it first and 10 at the Tennessee 12-yard line. I believe Charles Davis on the bottom of that pile, plus a couple of other volunteers helped make the tackle. Uh oh they're making too much yardage right now. But Joe Cover makes a good tackle locking his arms around the ball carry. It's Logan for three. It's second and seven at the Volunteer nine. Tennessee 10, Kentucky nothing. Counter play. 
Uh, as you would say, John, I guess a host of volunteers. <laughs> After four yards, and it will be third down, three at the five. Three for a touchdown, five for a first down, five for a touchdown. Here come the Wildcats. And this is, uh, this is a critical time, without question, leading 10 to nothing. A touchdown gets them back in the ball game very quickly. Well done by four or five of our volunteer players. Stack him up, and now a critical area. Fourth and one. A second look as Jenkins keeps the ball on third down, cuts in, and who's waiting for him? Johnny Williams trails 92 white. So here it is, fourth down two, and Kentucky's going to go for the first down, trailing 10 to nothing in the fourth period. And I can see why. You know, you're not going to get any closer in fourth and one. You've got to score a touchdown some way, and uh, that's a call I would have made probably too, whether it's right or wrong. And fine, fine, outstanding play by our defensive unit shutting them down, and now a better chance to have a goose egg for our defense. Let's take a second look as they try for first, and there for Tennessee, Johnny, number 46. Under the pile, Johnny Williams coming off his best game as a volunteer last week, and now it looks like playing another good game this week. And look at this, Jimmy Colquitt, 57-yard punt. Almost hit the Kentucky safety man. Very, very close. Tennessee downs the ball, and once again, the change in field position. Kentucky's got the ball. That was an outstanding punt. That was a great punt. Incomplete to Massey. That's what I'd look for for Jimmy to do more consistently this year. He really hasn't been consistent. He has a great leg, and he did have more good punts Saturday than any time in some time. It's beside the one he slides. He just needs to be more consistent. There's no reason why he shouldn't. I was glad to see him get that because I think it should have his confidence. Reggie White, first man, second man is Ricky Hope. We so, needed that man. Let's take a second look at the sack by White. You know, two and three people sometimes are having a hard time blocking Reggie. And good containment by Ricky Hope. So here to punt will be Calhoun. With the wind at his back, he sails a punt downfield and trailing after the ball is McGee, and then he backs away and it bangs into the end zone. Good and so Tennessee wins over Kentucky by a score of 10 to nothing. Exciting? It really was an exciting football game, and we'll talk more about it with Coach Johnny Majors, and also we'll be visiting with the victorious volunteers coming up in just one minute. You know, John, we've had five games, I believe, this year where there's been no touchdowns scored. And I was uh, not really kidding, I was kind of pulling the def defensive staff's leg. I got him in a, a room this week. I said, you know, uh, should it be nice to, to, to shut these last folks out? I said, you know, when I was an assistant coach for Frank Broyles in 1964, uh, we went undefeated. We shut the last six opponents out on defense, and I said, we led the nation in punt returns. That's kind of hard to lose like it. I think they <laughs> proved to me, well, by guess we'll just show that guy. And Kenny Hatfield, by the way, led the nation in punt returns that year. He was the outstanding head coach who Air Force team beat Notre Dame for the second week in a row. And second year in a row. That's correct, Kenny Hatfield, a former volunteer assistant as well. Right now, let's go to the dressing room where Bob Kessling is standing by to visit with the volunteers. Big portion of the Tennessee win over Kentucky was the play of the defensive line who now surround me, Ricky Holt is one of the defensive players. You got a couple of hands-on passes today. The defense played well. Yeah, I think the defense did a real good job. Uh, coming into the game, we knew we had to have a great game to beat Kentucky up here in Lexington because we knew that would be tough up here. You got pressure on the quarterback. That was a key. Uh, yes, I think we uh, got pretty good pressure on the quarterback. We studied films, and the other teams got pressure on him, so we figured we could, too. Congratulations, Ricky. Thank you. This is Reggie White, who had a couple of sacks in the game. Reg, another fine performance. For Thank you, Bob. Tell us about the, your thoughts on the game and uh, the defensive pressure you got on Jenkins. Well, I thought we played uh, overall good defense. Uh, we, we got good pass rushing. Uh, our goal was to shut him out, and that's what we did. Jenkins was a guy, if he, if he has time, he can pick you apart. You didn't give him time. No, we didn't give him time. Uh, you know, I got double and triple team, but Stuttaway and Ricky them helped me out a whole lot. Your partner, Mark Stuttaway, had his best game, perhaps, as a volunteer. Mark, congratulations. Thank you, boy. Tell us your thoughts on the contest, how Tennessee defense played. I think we played, you know, real good. You know, uh, Kentucky uh, got after us, and we knew we had to get back down, put some pressure on the quarterback, you know. We didn't want them pass long as that much, you know. And I guess we did a pretty good job. They got down deep twice, but you stopped them both times. Yes, you know, worked our way back there, you know. What about going to the bowl game? I guess that's an important thing for you, isn't it? Uh, that's, hey, that's great. I like that, you know. Go down to Florida, you know. My senior year, it's going to be all right. Go to Disney World. That's right. 
One of the big plays in the game of fourth and one deep in Tennessee territory, and Johnny Williams came up with a big stop. Congratulations. Thank you, Bob. It was just a play that we had called from the sideline due to their formation tendencies, and we just fared pretty well on it. You were in the right place, but you still had to make a big play and keep them from falling forward. Yes. Uh, we stressed all week, uh, wrapping up the ball carry, making a good hit, and I thought we did that very well today. Two shutouts in one season. Is, uh, some Tennessee hadn't done that in about 10 years. Yes. Uh, by the time third quarter came around, Divas kind of got the feeling about the shutout. I think we made, made, made us play a little bit harder. What about next week, Vanderbilt? That won't be hard to get up for at all. Uh, each player is going to get ready starting Monday. We can look at the film Sunday and get, correct our mistakes and get ready for Vanderbilt. Tennessee's offensive line controlled the football in the fourth period, kept away from Kentucky, and Bill Mayo, offensive guard, is with us. Bill, that was a key in the game. Yeah, it was. You know, we got the ball back with about seven, eight minutes, and sort of the same situation as LSU a few weeks ago. We knew what we had to do, and we started running the ball up the middle and started getting big chunks. The line was blocking pretty well there in that last drive. I wish we could have kept it the whole time, though. Kentucky was jumping around and uh, caused you a few problems, but you picked up most of their blitz. Yeah, and especially in the first half, they were doing some things they hadn't shown before, and we made some adjustments at halftime, and they worked out pretty well for us. Big confidence builder, I guess, from a mental aspect after the loss last week to Ole Miss. Yeah, it picked us up a lot, but now we got to get ready for next week. Got a big one coming. What about the Vanderbilt game and the bowl game coming up? Right now, we got our minds on Vanderbilt, and we're looking forward to it because they, they beat us last year, and we owe them one. After Tennessee's victory over the Kentucky Wildcats, the Volunteers accepted a bid to play in the Florida Citrus Bowl. Peter Cross is the president of the bowl, and I know you're excited about this. We really are. We followed Tennessee for many years, and we just thrilled to death with the great record, the great group of young men they've got this year, and tickled to death that the team voted tonight about 6.30 unanimously to come to the Florida Citrus Bowl on December 17th. This is one of the fastest growing bowls in the country, isn't it? Well, it really is. We're 38 years old. We changed our name yet last year to be more appropriately attached to citrus, and we are have had sellout crowds. This will be our fourth straight year, and our payoff now is second only to the the big teams on Dece uh, January the 1st. I know it's a situation, too, where you're excited about having a team like Tennessee come down there. Well, we really are. Tennessee's got such great tradition and heritage, and they have such great fans. They'll bring a great group, and we promise them a great week in Florida. Peter, thanks a lot. Thank you. Peter Cross, the ex president of the Florida Citrus Bowl. Athletic Director Bob Woodruff is with us. Coach Woodruff, your reaction to the bowl bit? Great. I'm really looking forward to see this. Yeah, what is that? That is a tangerine. That's been known for the tangerine bowl for years and years. It is citrus, and I'm really looking forward to going back to Florida. What about tickets for Tennessee fans? Yes. Uh, announcement will be made Monday. Students and faculty will get first choice of tickets at UT. Uh, the details will be in the paper Monday morning, the student paper. Uh, of course, we will send out applications to... Uh, many people. There will be clip and mail ads in the papers in all the major cities and we only have, uh, we have eight or 10,000 tickets and it'll be first come, first serve. So the Volunteers of Victory are here at Commonwealth Stadium in Lexington, 10 nothing over Kentucky. This is Bob Kessling reporting from the Tennessee Locker Room. Let's go back to John Ward. Thanks to Bob, to the players, and to the representatives of the Citrus Bowl, as Tennessee, of course, looks this week to Vanderbilt after winning at Kentucky by a final score of 10 to nothing. Tennessee wins over Kentucky 10 to nothing. There's something magic about the Tennessee-Kentucky weekend. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's always going to be a battle. Well, you know, I don't know when I've ever done as much talking about a, a team as I have this Kentucky team this past week. Of course, I think when you play at Tennessee and have coach here as an assistant coach and you come back and play against the great rivalries that we've had, you know, in Alabama and Auburn and, and Ole Miss and Kentucky and Tennessee and uh, Kentucky and Vanderbilt. But the Kentucky series this week is always special. And, John, I think if you've ever played it, you know there's never been such a thing as an easy Kentucky game. Certainly no easy victory. And I think whether it's Neyland or Bryant or Claiborne or Majors or whoever's coached here, you go back starting on Neyland. A couple of times Kentucky knocked them out of the Rose Bowl with ties uh, and didn't beat K Tennessee for many years. Blanton Collier, uh, who was a great pro coach and had a good record at Kentucky, got fired, but he stayed a long time because he beat Tennessee. We had a hard time beating when I was in school at Tennessee, except our senior year. And on and on. They upset us a couple of years ago in the election in a very cold, cold day. And we probably played one of the best games we've ever played. The first year I came to Tennessee in 77, when they were 10 and 1, we almost upset them. This game is a great traditional game. And frankly speaking, our team, I think, always respects Kentucky. This week it's Vanderbilt. 
Vanderbilt, that's enough said. We've got to get after them because they'll come in here again like they always do, foaming at the mouth. Uh, they'll play their best. They'll play like the Green Bay Packers and the Baltimore Colts and the Dallas Cowboys all put into one. We better be ready. And it will be this Saturday, of course, a later kickoff than normal, and you've been advised of that. And uh, we'll have the broadcast beginning at 3 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And then next week, we'll be right back here with Coach Johnny Majors to show you the highlights of the game. Till then, for Coach Majors, this is John Woods saying so long, everyone. <laughs>